Sometimes triumph can come from tragedy, as in this story of stones and the people who saved them as a symbol. St. Raphael's Church was built in 1821 and must have seemed as unchanging as the hill on which it stands, a reminder of the highland glens from where the settlers here had come. But in 1970, fire destroyed it, or so it seemed. The walls alone were left, the stonework in places turned white by the heat of the flames, a fire so hot it melted part of the church bell. There were suggestions the walls be torn down, but another fire had begun to burn in the minds of people like Joan MacDonald to save these walls and the heritage for which they stand. It's an incredible monument. Compared to some of the uh, monuments that you drive miles to see in Europe or, or Britain, it is something that's, uh, that's quite, uh, the edifice is quite uh, magnificent. What makes St. Raffles so special? Why has it been designated as a National Historic Site? because it is a cradle of Catholicism that reaches beyond Canada. The significance of them being Catholic is very profound in the history of the British Empire because this is the first Roman Catholic Church constructed in the British Empire since the Reformation of Henry VIII. And St. Raffles is also firmly planted in the present. This old church has already been used for a number of concerts by groups like the Canadian Brass. And part of the reason for that is the wonderful acoustics in here. And now a puzzle solved by local historian David Anderson. Why a church whose name looks like St. Raphael's is always known as St. Raphael's. Of course it's St. Raphael is correctly pronounced in that manner, but in the Gaelic it doesn't flow from the tongue that way. It comes out of St. Raphael's and uh, that's how we spot visitors to Ben Gary by how they pronounce St. Raffles. And there are visitors almost every day, and Katie Byatt is waiting to sell them a souvenir, more money for restoration. I'm interested in my roots, so I can understand that people want to know, and I like helping people that way. And in a world tossed on troublous seas, there is a peace inside these walls. St. Raffles will never be a church again, but Monsignor Donald McDougall says it has become a compass for those who want to navigate their past. Most of us cannot go back to Scotland and visualize the actual area or place where we came from. But in Canada, in Glengarry, for most of us, this parish is our beginning, is our roots. It may have been called a church in the wilderness, but the Scottish stonemasons who built its three-foot-thick walls have the admiration of Keith Kennedy, whose company is working on the restoration. Well, it was the finest stonemasons from Scotland that originally built this. It's, a, it's called Ashler Stonework, and all the stone cut, the mortar joints between, they were like two millimeter joints, which were like very fine stone cutting. So the repair of the walls has gone ahead, slowly, as cash permits and the end of more than 10 years of fundraising is finally in sight, with $35,000 left to raise to save St. Raffles. I shouldn't make a prediction, but I said I'd dance in the middle of the street if they ever reached that goal, and we're going to make that $35,000. We know we are, but we need the help of people who've uh, been loyal to us in the past, who have a historic interest to know the ruins and know that when it's complete, it'll be here forever. If you'd like to help, you can donate through Friends of the Ruins at Box 190, Williamstown, Ontario, K0C2J0, or check this website, www.straffelsruins.com. And when the work is finished, St. Raffles' future will be as secure as its past. Our lifetime, that's for sure, like 100 years, I would say. And so these walls which have seen the circle of life unfold within them will continue to stand, a reminder of the past and a signpost for the future. Norman Fetterly, CJOH News, St. Raffles.